Hello, good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to HYCM's workshop with myself, Giles Cochrane. We will, of course, be covering the ECB rate uh, decision today. And there's a huge amount of activity going on today. And I'm going to be making sense of that for us so that we know exactly what's uh, going on. It's a very volatile uh, day uh, and week. And I'm just going to explain to us all what's been going on there. Now, Without further ado, let's get stuck into the session. Don't forget, as we're looking at different entries, exits, uh, we will, of course, be doing it from an educational perspective. This isn't a signal trading service, but there's an awful lot to cover today. So I want to get on uh, with that as soon as possible. Uh, we will be looking at the ECB rate decision. And I just want to go through um, the usual what's expected, what's the surprise, what's the big picture and what's the instrument to look at trading. But before I do that, I want to give us a quick tour of what's going on markets because we're in a very, very fast moving market at the moment. There's a lot of concerns and I just want to run through step by step how we've got to where we are and also what we need to look for going forward. Now, let's just take a look here. We're just looking at global stocks. It's probably the, the easiest market to start by looking at. Now, if you remember last week, we had news that the Silicon Valley Bank was in trouble. It essentially had a flurry of depositors who wanted to withdraw their deposits, but because they'd invested in treasury bonds, it meant that they'd invested in them when they were yielding quite a low yield. So in effect, when depositors withdrew their money, the bank was taking a loss as they closed out their bond positions early. They didn't wait for the yield uh, to give its return. Instead, they had to close the deposit early, and this was resulting in mounting losses. So as a consequence, the bank essentially went insolvent, and then investors worried around the world that this crisis would potentially bubble over to other markets. So we saw the S&P 500, Dow, NASDAQ, um, all moving sharply lower on the session. And then we had similar reaction in European markets as they obviously concerned about potential flow over and contagion from the US. Now, then on Monday, we had more downside in equity markets. Now, that was despite the US saying they were going to backstop the Silver Valley Bank deposits and they were going to be ensuring that the bank wasn't allowed to collapse. And that meant that equity markets, in, in theory, should have been able to rally on the Monday, but they fell again lower. And that was mainly on fear, just that there would be more of a contagion. And then we had a series of reports out from Europe saying that, yes, the Bank of England didn't see any flow over from the crisis in the UK. Germany seemed strong. The European Commission said they didn't see a problem. And then on Tuesday, we had stocks bounce higher. Now, today, we've got more banking problems, but it's not from the SVB US bank, it's from Credit Suisse. Now, it was a comment that was made from the Saudi National Bank, who said that they weren't going to be giving any more money to the struggling bank Credit Suisse. Now, in the context of the comment, the Saudi National Bank said that, you know, the Credit Suisse bank looked robust enough, didn't need any more support. But given how sensitive markets are, the fact that the Saudi National Bank said that publicly has just raised concerns about the viability of Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse shares were down 20% uh, today. And the big concerns are that those contagion fears could potentially return. So now we're seeing European stocks so, you know, hit so hard. FTSE 100, Euro stocks, DAX down, you know, nearly 3%, Euro stocks down over 3%, FTSE 100 down over 2.5%. So big worries starting to flow over into US equity futures markets, Dow nearly down 2%, S&P 500 around 2%, the NASDAQ down around 2%. 
and you can see here that volatility in the VIX is pushing back up towards that 30 stressed region. Now, when you see volatility rising, then you see equity markets falling. So rising volatility, hindering the equity markets, and on top of volatility in the VIX, which is more and more people uncertain about the outcome of the US market, we're seeing volatility surge in bonds as well, an absolutely enormous amount of volatility. Now, let me explain why that's the case. Now, looking at bond markets, you can see that bond yields have taken a rapid shift lower. And, and that's because investors around the world, and there's an inverse relationship between bonds, yields, and interest rates. Now, investors around the world are suddenly saying, uh-oh, this risk of contagion and the, this tight monetary policy is having an impact on the global markets. And this is resulting in expectations being quickly withdrawn for the speed of interest rates, not only in the US, but around the world. And that's best seen in the short-term interest rate market projections. So if you look at it here, you can see that a week ago, um, markets were expecting the Fed to have a terminal rate over 5.5%, you know, at 5.68%. Now, you know, markets are getting close to expecting an interest rate cut, you know, very, very shortly. So this meeting is now expected to be on hold. It's like a 50-50% chance that the Fed won't shift interest rates next week. Now that is down, you know, from the pro just a week ago, it was like 5% and the markets were thinking, well, could the Fed hike by 50 basis points? Now there's only a 50% chance seen of a 25 basis point rate hike next week. Now that's, those interest rate projections are across the board. You can see here, this is the current expectations of interest rates. This is the prior. So you see the Bank of Canada, expected to take a much leaner path. Bank of England expected now to have a terminal rate, you know, 4.18%. So they're meeting next week as well. And markets are seeing, you know, 55% chance that there'll be no rate hike by the Bank of England. Bank of Japan, that's in a sort of category of its own, really. ECB, look how much that's changed. And we'll get on to trading the ECB decision uh, later. Um, Reserve Bank of Australia, again, do you see this big divergence between what was expected just a week ago and what's expected now? So lower interest rates are expected around the world. Now, medium term, that should start to be supportive for stocks again, because if the Fed is less aggressive, then that should be supportive for stocks. But in the, at the moment, we're not able to find any kind of bottom away from this worry. And it's just a wall of worry that's growing. And this is what's really spooking markets at the moment. Gold and silver are continuing to gain because if real yields fall at the same time as the dollar falling, that's supportive for precious metals. And if you just take a look at the majors today, interestingly, what we've seen today is the dollar index pushing higher. So the Dixie is pushing higher, just sort of saying that there's some real risk off fears that are starting to come through European markets. So it'd be interesting to see how the US take that in the next session. Now, looking at these PPI and core PPI prints, this is reassuring for markets because what essentially it means is that there's less pressure on the Federal Reserve to need to hike interest rates because the problem central banks have got is yes, they've got slowing growth, but they've also got very high inflation. So this just takes some of the inflationary pressures off the Federal Reserve when they meet next week. Now, with that all being said, I'm just going to check. Uh, don't, yeah, morning, Gavin. It's yeah, it's quite a fraught day today in the markets. If anyone's got any questions and, and there's something they'd like me to cover, please do um, give me a shout. That's where we're at. And what we need to be looking out for is the concern over Credit Suisse. So if all of a sudden there's some very reassuring headlines about Credit Suisse, we could see the market sort of reverse fairly quickly. A lot of these fears are coming over bank 
European banks and the worry about contagion. That's really what's giving the markets the jitters. Um, we have had some comments from Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse says government assistance is not a topic for the bank. So that's a pretty reassuring kind of statement. Um, but, you know, the fact that it's even talking about government assistance tells you how worrying it is for Credit Suisse. At this moment, we also have the UK budget being released as well. Um, there's not much impact expected from the UK budget, and it will most likely get caught up with this wider Credit Suisse issue. FTSE 100, you know, sinking even lower right now. So, Europe, it's bank and bank news that's really driving markets, and it's the worry about contagion and capitulation of credit availability, and that's what's really impacting uh, markets right now. Now, medium term, this should be quite supportive for stocks. If the Fed really are going to be, you know, cutting interest rates by nearly 100 basis points this year, those interest rate cuts will be supportive for stocks. So I, I am expecting the market to bottom out. Um, and yesterday's reaction made more sense to me where we saw stocks um, bouncing higher, okay? Bouncing higher, bouncing higher, bouncing higher as markets calmed with the SVB crisis fading. Now it's a new crisis, it's the potential Credit Suisse crisis, and you've got volatility pushing back up towards that 30 region. And you can see here in the VIX pushing to the upside. So if you want to have a quick look at you know, what's going on today, um, and after this webinar, you want to know, well, how's the market going? Look at the volatility index. It's just got, called the VIX and trade view. And basically, when you see the VIX rising, that's a pressure on stocks to the downside. And when you see the VIX falling, then you tend to see the S&P 500 rising, you know, falling VIX, rising S&P 500, rising VIX, falling S&P 500. All the VIX is, is the put options on the S&P 500. And a put option is when traders are expecting downside, so they might hedge their longs using some puts. And when you see this VIX moving higher, it just means the ratio of puts to calls is, is growing. And when this grows, it means that S&P 500 traders are insuring against further downside. So that's the relationship. Uh, and so when they feel reassured, then the S&P 500 can continue its sort of way higher. So just keep your eye on, on that as we go through the session and keep your eye on the Credit Suisse news because that's really, really important yeah i think gavin yeah gavin's taken off a uk 100 at long that you know that makes complete sense um and is very sensible gavin um if things look more positive then have a little look later i think that makes a lot of sense um particularly with um things as they are i i put a hedge in on my FTSE 100, so you know I'll, I'm I'm doing a very similar thing really. Um, Abdi says, do you think we can continue trading the euro US dollar sells, or the PPI print can change the sentiment? Um, I would. These are volatile markets, and when you get volatile markets like this, we could suddenly get the dollar surging. So I wouldn't be trading. I wouldn't be trading the euro US dollar now, Abdi. Just just hold fire because we could see a big flash. Yeah, Gavin, well done. Yeah. Now, what you need to do in these kind of markets is only move in when you're confident what's going on. Um, there's a lot of volatility going on here, and you just need to be patient. Now, the concern is that there's a huge flush uh, lower uh, and you can get capitulating markets like this so you have to have a plan to know what you'll do if that'll happen okay it could be like as gavin says he's just taken off one of his positions and he you know he's just going to stand a step aside it's much easier to think when you stood aside from the market 
So manage your risk, make sure you're happy with whatever, you know, if the worst comes to the worst and FTSE 100, you know, drops, drops 10, 15% or in a different equity market, drops 10, 15%, you know, you know, you know, you know what you're going to do. So very, very volatile markets, difficult times and uh, need to be very conscious of that. With that being said, we will look at the ECB decision to look at potential options. Now, the difficulty with this, and it's an obvious, it's an obvious difficulty. Um, the difficulty is that the expectations are so whipsawing around. It was only last week, and markets were expecting a terminal rate of around 4% for the ECB. That's now down to 3%. Going into this meeting, the ECB signaled very clearly that they will hike by 50 basis points. So you can see, look at these expectations heading in, you know, 50, you know, 48, 49, 50. Everyone was like, okay, yeah, ECB is going to hike by 50 basis points. Now, stir market, short-term interest rate markets only see a 38% chance of a 50 basis point rate hike. Now, in terms of market communications, we have had ECB sources pieces. So Reuters sources say that the ECB is still going to hike by 50 basis points. Um, but a Bloomberg sources piece says, no, they won't. So I'll just show you the Reuters piece. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's have a look. Just going to go down and show you this. And you'll see some of the mixed. That was that Saudi National Bank headline that came in earlier. The bank head said, we'll absolutely not provide more assistance to Credit Suisse. Right, I'll just look at this more quickly. That's it, this is this Reuters source. ECB was still leaning towards a 50 basis point rate hike on Thursday. Given calming markets, stubborn inflation and credibility concerns. Well, you know, markets are far from calm right now. You can see that there's heavy selling going across the board. So that view may change. Uh, and what they're concerned about is rising inflation. Now, if you look at the headline inflation for the Eurozone, it's 8.5%. But if you look at the core reading, you see it's 56 and rising. So you see, this is the problem the ECB have got, is that conditions are suddenly becoming quite volatile and there's genuine concerns about the availability of credit and equity markets are, are, are moving very, very quickly lower, but yet the ECB has got inflation, core inflation rising. So what does it do? Um, and that's why markets are expecting at the moment the ECB to say, you know, well, these sources pieces are saying they're going to hike by 50 basis points. Now, Deutsche Bank said it'll be 25 basis points. And a Bloomberg piece yesterday said they may not hike at all. Um, so there's really lots and lots of different um, issues. Here's a Bloomberg's ECB's hawkish plan set to face bolder opposition amidst SVB fallout. Well, now we've got this Credit Suisse issue. Now, all of this could turn quickly if Credit Suisse suddenly there's some, um, you know, there we, there we go. A Credit Suisse CEO says Credit Suisse is a strong bank and overshoot all regulatory requirements. Company liquidity base is strong. So we'll just, you know, have to see how that goes. That's sort of a more reassuring headline, but obviously markets not buying it at the moment. So you know, sometimes markets aren't even rational and sometimes the fear over a bank not being able to provide liquidity can become the issue itself. So fear can actually result in the problem. So that's something to be looking out for. Now, when we're moving 
let's just have a look at this here. Tomorrow, this is what we need to look for. So the decision comes out tomorrow at 1.15. Okay, that's when we get the interest rate decision. Now markets, short-term interest rate markets are expecting 55% chance of only a 25 basis point hike. So the best opportunity here would most likely come from the situation where they don't hike interest rates at all and they're on hold. So if they hold, then there's 45% of pricing that has to come out of the market that was expecting a 50 basis point hike. So if they don't hike interest rates at all, you would expect the euro to fall. Now, there's a risk here with this. And the risk is that markets take that as a reassuring sign. The fact that the ECB are sort of, you know, propping up markets, as it were. And you could see that weirdly supporting the euro, depending on what happens between now and tomorrow regarding risk. So what I would suggest is if you have the bond yield spread between the German 10-year bond and the UK 10-year bond, and if you just take a look at the title here, it's DE10Y minus GB10Y. That's what you want as the bond yield spread. DE10Y minus GB10Y. That is the yield bond yield spread between German 10-year bond and the UK 10-year bond. And the, the bond yield spread gives you an indication of where the, the euro pound pair will go. You know, the, the currency will track the, the, the yield spread pretty closely. So that means that if the ECB hiked by 25 basis points only, I would expect to flush down to that 0.8700 region. That would be a reasonable expectation. Um, but just to be aware that there is a the slight chance, I could see that if the ECB don't hike interest rates, then uh, you know, if they do leave interest rates unchanged or only hike by 25 basis points, I could see that resulting in a snapback as markets move lower on the decision and then bump higher in maybe like a reassurance that the ECB is not going to be hiking interest rates and crushing the economy. That might be the concern now, you see, that the ECB makes a policy mistake. Because if you, this is what the whole hard landing issue is with the Federal Reserve, that if they hike too aggressively, too quickly, it can cause a crunch in financial conditions. And that's obviously negative for a country. Um, so, if the markets like see a 25 basis point hike or no rate hike as positive for the eurozone, you could inadvertently see the euro gaining against the pound. So just to be aware of that function. So 25 basis points or no basis points hike, I'd expect the euro pound to move down to that 0.8700 region. That would be the currency pair that I'd look to trade at. The other pair you could potentially look at would be the euro US dollar, but it will be it will depend what's happening with the dollar itself. If you take a look here at the dollar index, you can see the dollar index is starting to push higher on risk off moves. So if that risk off move carries on and the dollar remains strong, then that could give some euro US dollar downside if the ECB only hiked by 25 basis points. So that's definitely something that I'd be looking for. But Euro Pound would be my go-to currency pair. Uh, if they hike by 50 basis points, I certainly wouldn't be interested in buying the Euro. Um, it's what the ECB have signaled, but I think there's a chance that that could be perceived as a policy mistake. So you could see the Euro move higher on a 50 basis point rate hike and then sell off sharply. So watch out for that dynamic because uh, I could see the market being concerned that the ECB is making a policy mistake. Now, some of this is going to depend very much on what happens with stocks and the Credit Suisse situation. At the moment, sentiment is very poor. 
see you know fresh lows being made across the board and you can see here volatility pushing up you know very high up towards that 30 region so that's where we're at very tricky um markets and the key headline to be looking out for is that credit swiss headline but even now you know even this headline from the credits of CEO is not stabilizing markets obviously yet so there may be some more downside to come there's definitely a lot of angst and fear in this market and if you want to keep a measure of fear after this webinar and you're not sure because I know some of you have access to professional trading tools some of you won't so it can be a bit harder to know you know what's the mood of the market take the VIX if you start seeing the VIX selling off sharply and moving lower you know that sentiment is improving if this moves higher particularly if you see it moving above 30 31 that means fear's just got a whole lot worse and you'd expect more downside in equity markets um yeah asks, are there pairs not affected by interest rates no all currency pairs will be impacted by interest rates uh, yao and particularly at the moment because all currency pairs are having their sense that their interest rate um, expectations being altered um, the yen is one of the exceptions in a way in that their central bank is still trying to encourage inflation but um, the yen is will be pushed and pulled around with risk so risk off trading you would expect the yen to gain so that's why you'll see the yen pairs gaining in a, in a mood like this if you just take let's just take a look at the yen This is the yen index, and you can see the yen index pushing up towards the high because we're seeing risk off trading. Okay, and if you look at the yen pairs, you see the yen is gaining in the against the high beta currencies like the Aussie, the New Zealand dollar, and the Canadian dollar. You'd expect to see them these dropping lower as the yen finds buyers and the Swiss franc finds buyers. So that's all kind of as expected. Tricky markets, right? And look, more bids coming into bonds. This is looking like it's one of the this what looks like it wants to have another flush lower. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a big flush in equity markets coming later in the day. Um, could easily see that. So buckle your seat belts. It could be a rough ride. Um, I am expecting these to eventually turn around, but today is not a day to kind of be banking on a turnaround but over the medium term remember lower interest rates is more uh, conducive financial conditions for uh, markets so eventually this will this kind of crisis should result in rate cuts and that will be supportive of uh, markets moving forward but today is the you know the, the day of the bad news um yeah, I see Credit Suisse, you, you know, that you can see the headline here. CEO says the US situation is not comparable, has nothing to do with the company. They're scrabbling to try to really reassure the markets, but it's uh, very tricky. Uh, OK, folks, difficult days, difficult days. Um, we're back on Monday. We'll have the usual look ahead. Um, the only thing I would say, just stay safe out there. Uh, limit your risk if you've got any sort of positive risk on look at you know limiting it um and with your with your vix what you want to make sure there is just keep an eye on it if it keeps moving higher and higher you know volatility is going worse and we could see a turnaround now just getting some more positive comments out from credit swiss um but we need to see a bit more reassurance than that but sometimes markets can be fearful and keep selling off so just bear that in mind Okay, folks, take care and we'll speak soon. Thanks everyone now. Goodbye.